Hello everyone, welcome to Close Look. Today I'm sitting with Naseema and Sat Charan Simran. And there's a reason why these ladies are in our studios today. Um, first, I would like to ask um, Naseema to introduce herself to our audience. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Naseema Nasto. I'm the founder of Hamid Nasto's Anti-Bullying Coalition. Sat Charan Simran. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. My name is Sat Charan Simran and I'm a registered social worker and I have 30 years experience counseling youth as well as adults on the issues of addiction and trauma, anxiety and depression. Welcome to our studios. Now um, we want to talk about children and youth and uh, the reason why we want to talk about children and youth is because we sometimes um, ignore them at home, in schools also, and um, Nasima has experienced that um, in a very uh, painful way. We'll talk about that in our show as well. But um, Satcharan Simran, uh, from you, I would like to know, um, you know, what are some of the signs or small stuff we can mm -hmm. say that we, you know, see our kids certain ways they are behaving or some indications or what they are saying and mm -hmm. as a parent we ignore sometimes mm -hmm. um, is there any better way to handle those kind of behaviors mm -hmm. yes I think that the most important thing is the relationship that we have with our children and so that's a relationship where the children can come to us mm -hmm. and no matter what's going on tell us you know that there's something wrong something's going on and I know in your situation you shared a little bit earlier tonight about, you know, different things that your son was doing, right? And I think it's so hard sometimes for children and youth to actually say exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so there's like these little, little hints, little things that, you know, maybe aren't quite right. And I think for most of us, we don't want to jump to conclusions. We don't want to like set off the alarm bells, right? And so there's so many little things. And so some examples might be if a child is, you know, seems very depressed, lots of things are shifting, maybe they're not hanging out with their friends anymore, maybe they're isolating themselves, they're not going out or they're staying in their room, their diet might change, they might eat more, they might eat less. So, you know, really notice, is there some shifts going on with my child that wasn't there before? Nasima, now, uh, Hamid, um, before he did what he did, he had given you some indications. About suicide. About suicide. Yeah, he wrote in a suicide note that uh, that social worker came to his class to talk about suicide. And she said, a person committing suicide gave ends. And he said, I gave you guys many of ends, but it wasn't your fault, you didn't understand. For example, one day he told me that every day a teen commits suicide. This was a hint, I missed. He said that. He said that. And uh, the other thing that he mentioned in the suicide note as well, he said that my friend took his life. And now, I when kids are saying that, sometimes they might not appear to be serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can say it in a joking way, in a, yes. in a you know, sarcasm also. Um, and they don't, and we sometimes as a parent, don't think it's serious mm -hmm. something serious they're talking about and sometimes we just say oh maybe he's just saying this or mm -hmm. she's just saying this mm -hmm. right yeah that's what happened to me and yeah. he must have gone to the teachers also probably he was talking with his friends friends uh, his friends told me about that mm -hmm. that uh, if i take my life i'll go to china and then jump off the wall china wall or something okay. yeah okay no one took him seriously no one yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's what and, and, and we think that oh my kid has some behavioral problem mm -hmm. or maybe kid is behaving certain way because of oh he wants to he so he thinks he's so special or he wants to be treated in certain way. Mm -hmm. I mean I may be wrong but that's you can what the police me. said. The police told me that uh, uh, when they found the suicide note the police said don't worry you will come back. Uh, it's just he's seeking attention. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that's. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, why we have these discussions? Why we talk about it? 
because we should not take anything lightly that our children are saying and it's not about committing suicide uh, or even attempts of suicide it's just sometimes seeking attention there could be there could be some other um, other phobia anxiety problem, like i want to anxiety so there could be some other health issue going on mm -hmm. i mean we know other um, problems that children face sometimes uh, other behavioral problems they can face um, it could be anything it could be someone bullying them or it could be um, someone you know there is something they don't they don't like happening at home or in the neighborhood sometimes or there could be some other problem that we it could be going on it's just i'm trying to get to the brain yeah. of the child yeah you know and i think what's it's, coming up for me is there can be so many things going on for that yeah. child and it might be displayed in different ways so when you say seeking attention and so that's really about the child wanting some support and you doing different behaviors like people call it acting out but really what it yes. is it's a cry for help yes it's a right? yes, yes it's yes. a cry for help right so <clears throat> hamid gave indications but nobody took him seriously now sometimes it could be some something else bothering them absolutely so there's so many things that things that go on for children's youth as well as adults mm -hmm. right inside there's so much going on for all of us and mm -hmm. you know life isn't easy and so it's really difficult for children and youth to talk about this. And so sometimes, instead, we might see different behaviors. We might see behaviors that are, you know, um, troubling for us as um, a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be a child not coming home when you want them to come home. There might be drinking, might be using drugs, might be just, you know, not listening to you or, you know, not doing schoolwork, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. It's important to look at what's possibly underneath that not just at the behavior. I think so many times it's looked at only the behavior and yes. then that's, you know, oh, that child, you know, is just a bad child or a problem child. Yeah. No, there's yeah. something going on. It's really important to look underneath. And and also you were talking earlier about those subtle signs, right? Mm, those those signs. little like those little hints and what I wanted to say about that um, and, 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 you know, friends miss it, right? We all can miss it. And I think a big part of that is, is that we're scared to say the word, we're scared to check it out. You know, I've been working with you know, people for 30 years and many of them have, you know, had suicidal thoughts. We all, let's face it, we've all thought, you know, one day or another, oh God, you know, we may have said to our girlfriends or whatever, yeah. oh, I just, I don't want to go on anymore. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to attempt suicide. However, it's important to check these things out when people mm -hmm. say things like this or drop little hints. But in our society, we are so afraid to even say that word because there's a myth out there that if I say, oh, you know, are, are, are you, you know, thinking of ending your life, that if I say that word, I'm going to actually promote that, that that person will do that. And yes. that's actually a myth. So it's actually, I think, so important to educate people that it's actually really okay and really important just to say that. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm really worried about you. Yeah. You know, you're saying these things, you're giving, another hint is giving away belongings. You're giving away your cherished belongings. I'm really worried about you. I know you've been struggling at school. Are you thinking about ending your life? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Asking and just questions. asking direct questions. Which is mm -hmm. important. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. You know, and then there's specific questions that you can ask to determine how serious the situation is. Like open-ended question instead absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What's going on? You know, but I think it's important to ask that I'll question. Be, yeah. Are you thinking of ending your life? So if I'm, and, and I think that there's division in terms of what, you know, a friend's role is or a parent's role versus a counselor. Obviously, you know, it's not expected that a friend or a parent is going to do a full on suicide assessment with somebody because that's a counselor's role. Yes. But just even to know enough that, geez, I need to, you know, get them to the hospital or I need to get them into a counseling room or, or you know, something um, to ask, you know, are you okay? Have you been thinking of hurting yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if somebody says yes or maybe, you know, it's really important to ask, do you have a suicide plan? Mm -hmm. You know, and these mm -hmm. questions can, you know, give us an idea of, wow, this is super serious, you know. And you, you mentioned earlier about um, jokes. And so one thing that I always say, and I know even for myself, is mm -hmm. we use humor a lot. And I think yes. it can be very healing. But also, I think that we, we don't talk so honestly in our society. And so a lot of times humor is used to mask 
how we're feeling. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I myself have um, uh, this experience when my children were uh, in elementary school. Mm. Um, you know, when I was going through my separation, um, I. I told my child to talk to the counselor. I said, mm -hmm. you know, talk to your teacher if you ever need to talk to someone when mm -hmm. I'm at work. Mm -hmm. And my child, my child said, no, mm -hmm. do not talk to my teachers. Children don't want to open up. They don't want to acknowledge that they have a problem yes. or somebody's bothering them or something is not right or they don't understand something they don't want to talk about it yeah. it's our job we uh, to let them know that we are not here to eliminate the problem for you we are just giving you the skills to manage your problem you know exactly. problem is there but how to manage it is a very and important. i think the reason why they don't want to open up or talk about it is they feel like uh you know other what will other other kids think in the class bullying you yeah. yeah i also think that it's really super important i mean you know, I do a lot of training around trauma, mm -hmm. and when a child has been traumatized, but what, whatever event that is, it could be mm -hmm. very severe or, you know, on the continuum less severe, it still impacts them. However, there's research that has shown that if that child is traumatized by something, and then they come to a responsible adult, it could be their, um, it could be their father, their mother, or someone else, and they tell that person what actually happened, and that adult acts responsibly and gets them the support, stops whatever's happening, that that really eliminates a lot of the, um, the implications for that child. So it is so important. I really believe that children do want to say something, but yeah. it is difficult. And so again, the most important thing is having that relationship, that open relationship, so the children know it's okay, you can come to me with anything. I think so much the children well, are scared that- Well, most of the families, no, it's not okay. Because exactly. they'll exactly. they'll get a slap or they'll exactly. say like shut up you don't need to discuss this exactly you know you're being a you know yes I received an email from a, a girl I think and she mm -hmm. told me that uh, I told my dad that I have been bullied and he told me why you are worrying about bullying look the fridge is full of food you have a nice house mm -hmm. why you are so upset and anxious about bullying you know and sometimes yeah. they get the blame they are afraid of that yes. but they will get yeah. the blame you she, must have done something they blamed her you must yeah. have parents us like, yeah. what, did you do? Yeah. Did you say, what did you yeah. do? What did you do? What did you do wrong? wrong yeah. That so, is bullying. You. Yeah. So that's why I go back to the relationship. That's the most important thing that that child is being supported. Now, Connection. unfortunately, yes, and that that is safe. Now, unfortunately, you bring up a really good point that in a lot of homes, that isn't the case, and there no. isn't that safety, or there might be physical safety, um, mm -hmm. but there isn't that emotional safety. No. So then, you know, obviously, that is going to be really hard for the child to, you know, to talk, and then. Hopefully there's a, a teacher, um, a school counselor. Now I know in your situation you said that, that they didn't kind of get what was going on, right? Yes, yes. And so it's really important that not only the children are getting the support, but also the parents are educated and really supported to look at their own healing that needs to be done mm -hmm. as well. So edu education is and the key. It's huge, yes. it's huge. And the, the staff at the school, the teachers, and so many um, professionals are not educated around this issue, mm -hmm. right? And, the and there's a lot of fear, and there's a lot of fear with professionals even how to talk about this issue, right? So you can't assume that a teacher is going to feel comfortable to know how to deal with any hints around suicide. Mm -hmm. They're not trained in that. So we have to train them then? Yes. And I Absolutely. was yeah. education. I, I was born and brought up in India. Mm -hmm. And there, <laughs> when I was growing up, you're not supposed to talk about emotions, especially guys. No, yeah. guys don't talk about emotions at all. Mm -hmm. Now, when I sit m with my cousins, we, we laugh about it. Mm. that our childhood and our parenting was so wrong yeah. mm. and thank God we, we uh, have that awareness now and we mm. are able to treat our children better but otherwise it was just learned behavior whatever we saw absolutely our absolutely and we're you know we're a product of what our experience was right mm -hmm. so it's about us all, all looking at ourselves and looking at yeah. doing our own healing work so that we can become better parents and be there more for our children yeah. right and so there's yeah. that end of it as well yes i mean things have shifted but yes. still there's a lot going on where any wounds that i have if i haven't healed them 
then that's impacting the people that I interact with, mm -hmm. right? Including mm -hmm. if I have children, my children. Nasima, I want to know one thing from you, and this might be very painful for you to answer. If you had listened to Hamid, mm -hmm. you think that things would have been different? Yes, because as I said, awareness is the best weapon against any issues. I didn't know what bullying is. Mm -hmm. When Hamid took his life, next morning, people said that he was bullied in school. And the uh, media came and my husband didn't want to talk about it. I said, come. All, I invited media inside and they said, your son was a straight A student and he was bullied in school. Mm -hmm. And that's why he took his life. And if I knew before, his suicide would have been prevented. And I did a lot of research after his suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found out that uh, usually mm, victims of bullying, they don't talk with their parents because they are afraid that the parents will make a big deal of it yeah. and they are afraid of retaliation. Or they will confront other parents or other children. Retaliation. And it will get, yes, it will get, get worse. worse. Yes. Yeah. I was telling you about the letter that I received from an yeah. inmate. Yeah. I think I found it, I'll bring it to you. And uh, after Hamid's suicide, I received letters from uh, uh, prison. And the inmate wrote to me that the reason that he is inside is because of bullying. Because he was bullied so much at school, mm -hmm. he had to escape. And then he gave his lunch money to the bully. And then he got involved in criminal activities. Yes. He was serving a sentence of, I don't know, eight years or 10 years. He wrote mm -hmm. a lengthy letter, but I found it. <laughs> I kept mm -hmm. it, yeah, and it was so sad. Mm -hmm. you know? That is sad, and I can understand where, you know, you say the kids are scared. They're scared, like, what's going to happen, you know? I know a good friend of mine, her child was bullied, and there was a lot of fear that, you know, he did tell his, his mom, thank goodness, but then he was really afraid he, you know, he was able to say, you know, mom, I don't want you to do anything, yes. because I, and she'd say, why? And he'd say, well, because I'm scared, you know, that there's going to be retaliation now. Mm -hmm. So the good thing was that she, she did listen to him, and he was able to talk to her, and they were able to deal with it in a way that was conducive for mm -hmm. all of them, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like really crucial that that support is there for the children as well, for them to know that, you know, there is some safety. There is some safety. Yes. And if it isn't there at home, then, you know, that's maybe the school counselor or the teacher so, you know, I think with a lot of these issues, there needs to be some awareness, like education for education those professionals that are working yes, with the children, mm -hmm. like the signs to look at, how to best support them, how to let them know that it is safe, mm -hmm. that they will work with them around a solution. And right. programs like that, like, thank you for doing this show, and uh, parents are listening and they know about the warning signs. Well, thanks for yeah, speaking yeah. out and also for providing us your son's note that is going in our next issue, um, which is on anti-bullying. Um, and um, so you will see Hamid's note in that magazine. And um, Nasima has written the article. And that must be, I was, I was reading the article, must be very, very uh, heartbreaking, very painful for you. So, but, but, you know, hats off to you. You're, you know, helping so many families now, so many children now. Thank you. Yes. So that is this was Hamid's last wish. Mm -hmm. He wrote in his suicide note over mm -hmm. and over. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we will definitely do whatever we can mm -hmm. um, to, to, you know, support his wishes. Uh, also, bullies are everywhere, not only in schools, they are at workplaces, Work at home. At home. I have seen at home, Absolutely. you know. So please pay attention to your children's behaviors, the way they are treating each other, the way your family members are treating you. Pay attention to that. Um, your friends, the way they talk to each other. Pay attention to everything, the way they are talking because you never know uh, how one person might be perceiving those comments and they might end up one day the day the, the way Hamid did. We don't want that to yeah, happen. Yeah, bullying is about power and control. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, Satcharan and Naseema, thank you so much for coming to our thank studios. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you. I have another yeah. example too because uh, I was talking, uh, there was a TV Do you show. want us to record that? I'm telling you if it's appropriate, record it, yeah. yeah. And uh, there was a bully and we had victims and it was me and, 
other parents too. Mm -hmm. It was Youth News Network. They did a piece on bullying, and uh, after the um, my speech, the bully came to the lunch room and uh, he said, he, is, "He will stop bullying people." At that moment, he said, "No, we should bully. Why they are, uh, why they cannot defend themselves." That's why awareness is very important. Some kids, they don't know what they are doing is wrong. They need education and information. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. And he, he was saying, t he did things to the victims, for example, putting their head in the toilet seat and flashing oh. the toilet, mm -hmm. if they rat on them. They always code of silence. Mm -hmm. Protect the bully. It's mm -hmm. time to break that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that is why I was also saying that um, notice the behaviors at home also, the way your children are behaving with each mm -hmm. other sometimes, because that's home, how they're yes. going to treat others in schools also. So that's Absolutely. very important. And the way fathers and mothers Mother are and treating brothers. their children and Absolutely. other uh, you know, relatives or fr their friends, the way they are talking, they're picking up on everything. They are, yeah. I, I want the parents and the teachers to keep their eyes and ears open. If they see something that looks like bullying, they should intervene and put a stop. And yeah, because we, as a parent, I think it's our responsibility. We always blame schools. When something mm -hmm. like this happens, we say mm -hmm. that, oh, teachers didn't do this, teachers didn't mm -hmm. do that. They yes. could have stopped. Mm -hmm. But I think before teachers come in the picture, parents. Parents. Yeah. Well, what's yes. going, what's going on at home? Oh, yeah. It's what's going on at home. Right. Right. And parents sometimes, I don't want to blame parents also, sometimes it's learned behavior, they don't know any better. We do, the thing is, we do the best that we can. Exactly. Right, and our behaviors are a result of our experience in life and really uh, our coping mechanisms of how to survive in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to mention that, you know, a bully, you know, comes from somewhere, right? So we're all exactly. born pure and innocent and lovely beings. Mm -hmm. And so how does that one baby end up a bully and the other the victim? Yeah. Well, there's there's stuff going on. There's pain within that bully, and Insecurity. they need to get that. Yeah, they need to get that sense of power and control to feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's not to say that that's, that behavior is acceptable. Obviously it's not, it's you know totally unacceptable. However, if we really want to stop this, we need to look at what is making the bully. And so, you know, really looking at, okay, what is going on for that person? Yes. You know, getting them yeah, some exactly. support around the pain that's inside of them so mm -hmm. that they don't actually have to lash out in that way. Mm -hmm. So there's the Very other side true. to look at as well. And, and in another episode, we'll discuss how to heal your body, mind, and your soul. So there is solution. That would be great. There yeah. is help available. Yes, you know, if there is something that is going on inside that is bothering you mm -hmm. or in your family, someone is hurting inside and you know it but you don't know what to do how to do it uh, help is available and um, well in our closing would you like to say something thank you for uh, inviting us to your show it was a uh, very nice talking about the things that help families mm -hmm. teachers the students and the more awareness is the Awareness is the best weapon against any issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And discussions are so important. It's just like we are sitting and discussing Absolutely. these issues that uh, I think families need to open up and they, they have to have open discussions. Sometimes they are afraid that it might end, end into an argument. Yes. But it's so important to have those discussions, discussions. at home. It's, it's help is available, support groups are available and um, you can always write to us as well. Our next issue is coming out in February on anti-bullying and you will mm -hmm. read Hamid's handwritten note in our magazine as well. Article is written by Nasima and there are other uh, good articles. As you know, our magazine, all the articles are written by the writers. It's nothing is copy pasted. So be part of it. And if you think that you have something that you want to share with the world, um, our lines um, are always open. Please call us, write to us. Thank you so much for watching Close Look.